Hey guys, welcome back to Cook, Read, Review. My name is Shay and I'm just the girl who likes to eat and who likes to read. So I figured why not merge the two and cook what I read about. This week we're reading Hooked on the Game by C.M. Owens. I got this recipe from tastebetterfromscratch.com. There are two separate recipes, one for the fill-in and one for the pie crust. The links to both are in the description box below. C.M. Owens is one of those authors that can do no wrong for me, except stop writing. She's a genius across multiple genres. You want some sweet, slow burn romance? She's got the Sterling Shore series for you. Do you want a motorcycle club romance? Then the Death Chaser series is the ultimate MC romance series for you. Are you in the mood to laugh out loud and look like a crazy person in public? Then I recommend the Wild One series. Are you adventurous and like reverse harem? Then she's got you covered under her pen name, Christy Cunning. Or how about a thriller? She's got you covered there too, under her pen name, S.T. Abby. I don't even want to admit how long it took me to realize S.T. Abby meant stabby. While I would say that she needs to work on her book covers, what she lacks there, she makes up far in her stories. And this one was no different. You can tell Hooked on the Game was one of her earlier stories. This story follows two college students, Raya, who's having the worst day of her life after two guys destroyed her apartment, and Kate, the stereotypical rich jerk. I got this recipe from the scene in Chapter 9 when Raya takes Kate into town and they spotted Mrs. Bates award-winning cherry pie. Now on to my thoughts on this recipe from tastebetterfromscratch.com. For the filling, the thing that made me love this recipe is that she told you how to make the pie using fresh cherries or canned cherries. This was also the thing that made it very confusing to read. I chose fresh cherries and spent way too much time trying to figure out where the butter was supposed to go, only to realize butter was only for canned cherries. Another thing I liked about this recipe is that she took the time to explain the difference between sweet and sour cherries and even had notes on how to reduce the amount of sugar if using sweet cherries like me. For the pie crust, everything was going well until I had to transfer the rolled out crust onto the pie dish. My crust refused to move. I had to start out over and rolled it out using more flour on the parchment paper. As you can see, I still had to do a bit of patchwork to fill up the holes.
I thought my problem was solved until it came time to do the top part. No matter how much I flowered the parchment paper and the rolling pin, I had the same problem. My strips would not detach from the parchment paper. They broke apart and were hard to work with. As you can see, I got frustrated and did not even film that part. I think this was because my dough was too wet. Which is strange, because I didn't even use half of the water that was recommended. All in all, I give this recipe a 3.5 out of 5. Because it turned out great and tasted amazing, but like Raya's and Kay's relationship, it wasn't without its difficulties. Have you tried this recipe? What did you change? If not, do you have a better pie recipe? Leave a comment down below and let me know. If you've reached this far, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, or comment down below and let me know what you think about the recipe. Otherwise, you can find my review of both the book and this recipe on my blog at cookreadreview.com.